interwar era saw significant evolutions when it comes to armored vehicles, both in terms of technical and doctrinal aspects. A number of firms, particularly those in Great Britain, were progressively creating a wider variety of armored vehicles which would then significantly influence manufacturers in other countries. One of the concepts democratized during this era was that of an amphibious light tank, a vehicle which would assume reconnaissance and light cavalry combat duties while not being stopped by rivers or marshes. Though the British would be the first to introduce such vehicles in the late 1920s and early 1930s, interests of these vehicles would eventually emerge in many other countries, including France. This would result in the Batagnon Chatillon DP2 prototype, dating from the mid-1930s. Hello and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Wood, and today I'll be covering the most complete French interwar amphibious tank, the DP2. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tank Encyclopedia content, and any help would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. By the early 1930s, the French cavalry had already taken some minor interest in amphibious vehicles design, with some projects such as the schneider Laurent amphibious armored car, which used a wheel-come-track configuration similar to the Czechoslovakian Kolohosenka. Dating from around 1927, this project would not go anywhere, and it appears to have been planned as an unarmed vehicle. The French cavalry was now interested in an armed amphibious automitrailleuse, literally translating to armored car. The term automitrailleuse was used to designate all armored fighting vehicles of the French cavalry in the interwar era, regardless of how it moved. As such, vehicles designated as automitrailleuse may have had wheels, tracks, or both, and range from tiny scout vehicles such as the 5 tons AMR-33 to the fairly large cavalry tanks such as the 19.5 ton S-35. The design was created by the technical section of automotive combat equipment, with the technical realization being assured by the general locomotive construction company Batagnon Chatillon, located in Nantes, western France. Batagnon Chatillon, though it had previously manufactured some military equipment in the form of railway gun carriages, was a newcomer in the tank industry. Around the same time it produced the DP-2, it would also submit a proposal for the 1933 Light Infantry Tank Program planned to replace the FT. Batchamp produced their DP-2 prototype in 1935. The vehicle was fairly large in size for a light tank. Its precise dimensions are not known, but the hull dwarfs the turret, an early model of the APX-5 used in some light cavalry designs. The hull was clearly designed for maximum buoyancy, potentially at the expense of some aspects of ground warfare. It used riveted construction. It featured an elongated bow-shaped front designed to fend small waves with large floating compartments on the sides. The vehicle's suspension was located under these large floating compartments. It was a very small suspension design, with what appears to have been a front drive sprocket and a rear idler. The suspension featured eight small road wheels, two independent ones at the front and back, and three ensembles of two. These appeared to have very little mobility planned, with the vehicle overall having a very low, flat track run, as well as poor ground clearance. Once again, this is obviously intended to maximize buoyancy. It would, however, highly reduce the vehicle's crossing capability when dealing with trenches and other obstacles. Like most other French light AFVs of the era, the Batagnon Chatillon DP2 featured a two-man crew. The driver was located in the hull, his compartment being behind the ship-like bow. This reduced his visibility when leaving the water, which was a delicate maneuver for amphibious tanks. The commander was to be located in the turret, however, when first unveiled, the prototype only featured a wooden mock-up and not an actual functional turret design. This mock-up was pictured with a 37mm SA-18 main gun offset to the right. The vehicle reached a weight of 11.5 tons. Its armor layout is unknown, but as was typically the case for light amphibious tanks, it was probably very thin. The rear-mounted engine appears to have been a 225 horsepower, 12-cylinder engine. This engine was pretty heavy, to the point where the center mass of the vehicle was located too far to the rear, which would again prove an issue when leaving the water. The engine compartment sloped downward. One of the more curious features of the vehicle were large, cylindrical air intakes, located to the sides of the turret and driver's compartment. The DP-2 featured a turbine for movement on water, and as such, didn't rely on the movement of its tracks. On water, the vehicle would turn by rotating the water outlet of the turbine. The vehicle's registration was 8121-W1. After the vehicle was unveiled in 1935, the idea to make it undergo navigation trials was submitted by the director of APX, Atelier de Construction du Puteau, 
or Puteaux Construction Works, located in the Parisian region. On March 21, 1936, these trials began in Poissy, on the River Seine, downstream from Paris. On water, the vehicle proved quite promising. It moved at a maximum speed of 6.5 km per hour. There were no issues entering water, and navigation was performed without any issues. Tests showed that adding a weight of 100 kg would lower the DP2 by 1 cm into the water. However, leaving the water proved a far more difficult task. When trying to get out of the river, the vehicle naturally began posing itself on the riverbank's bottom, angling upward. This, however, proved too much for the engine compartment, which quickly began to flood. Filling up with water, the heavier and heavier DP2 sank right down. Following the disastrous conclusion of these first navigation trials, the DP2 was recovered and sent back for further work to be performed. Some considerable changes had to be brought to the engine compartment to ensure such an incident would not happen again. The engine louvers were modified and given retractable valves, which would cover them when exiting the water, in order to ensure the engine compartment would not flood. Air intakes were also added so the engine could still have access to some air while this was taking place. Likely at the same time, the mock-up turret was replaced by a real one. This was an early version of the APX-5 turret, which would later be mounted on other vehicles such as the AM-39 Chandra Samua, AMR-35 ZT-2, and the Panhard-178 destined for the colonies. This one-man turret featured the 25mm SA-35, a semi-automatic anti-tank gun as its main armament, with a 7.5mm MAC-31E machine gun coaxially mounted. Though the gun was fairly low on caliber and not fully automatic, it was a decent anti-tank weapon which would be able to defeat most tanks of the era. Its operation within a one-man turret would remain suboptimal due to the overtasking of the commander though. This modified engine compartment and functional turret raised the vehicle's weight to 12.12 tons, which was judged to be too much. It was hoped that weight could be saved by adopting a lighter engine in the future, though this never happened. From June 6th to August 13th, 1936, the revised vehicle was submitted to new trials. The DP-2 was originally planned to cross 550 kilometers on roads, but only 115 kilometers would effectively be run, during which the vehicle reached a maximum speed of 40 and a half kilometers per hour. These trials appeared to have focused on the performances of the suspension with less attention given to amphibious capability. The vehicle undertook some less significant revisions following these trials, notably new stamped steel tracks which were judged to be more robust, before trials resumed again on March 1st, 1937. During these, new water trials were undertaken, but the vehicle still proved to be lackluster. Though the DP-2 did not sink this time, the engine compartment still proved to be not entirely waterproof, perhaps due to little more than riveted construction on the vehicle. Starting up the engine also proved pretty difficult, and trials were stopped on April 26, 1937. After the disappointing conclusion of these new trials, the Trials Commission decided that the vehicle would need serious additional work before any new trials could be undertaken. Following this, the vehicle was sent to APX's facilities in Ruel, likely ARL. Its further fate beyond this point is unknown. The vehicle appears to never have undertaken a new trials campaign though whether some modifications were brought to it after the last trials, but before all the work on the DP-2 is abandoned, is not known. The DP-2 would not mark the conclusion of all Bataillon Chateaillon work in amphibious tanks, with the mysterious DP-3 undertaking trials upon the German invasion of 1940. This was an odd and mysterious vehicle, which massively differed from the DP-2 in general architecture, and appears to have disposed of a centrally mounted turret entirely, preferring two side-mounted combat chambers. The DP-2 was not the first French amphibious armored vehicle to be conceptualized. However, it was the first vehicle which could fully be considered an armored amphibious tank trialed by the French military, in an era where that type of vehicle was widely studied and produced abroad, at this point largely due to influence of British tank design. The DP-2 would not prove to be a successful design by any margin. Despite good navigation capability, the vehicle's considerable woes when exiting water proved a major issue with the prototype, which would eventually lead to it being shelved. As with many French interwar prototypes, the eventual fate of the DP-2 is unknown. The vehicle is not known to have survived to this day. As such, it was very likely scrapped. Though whether this was performed during the war, before the war, or under German occupation, or perhaps even post-war is unknown. This concludes our video on this little-known but fascinating French amphibious tank prototype. 
If you liked this video, please leave a like and a subscription. You can find more information relating to this vehicle in the full article which is linked below. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.